So we've seen a couple of examples where we try to find equations of planes, and there are probably a dozen different scenarios that we could come up with that give you enough information to establish the equation of a plane. We've done a couple of them. Uh, now we're going to move on and we're going to look at a problem of intersecting planes. Right? So the, the idea here is that you've got an intersecting, I find intersecting planes quite difficult to draw. So bear with me and we'll settle on a sort of good enough drawing. There's one plane. Here's another, and something like this, right? Okay. So we could do that. And, and now the intersection, right? The intersection of two planes is going to be a line, right? Think about like putting two boards, lying one board on another, or two pieces of paper or something, right? There's, there's going to be sort of a line where they meet. All right. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got these two intersecting planes. We want to get an equation for the line. So to get an equation of a line, we know what we need. We need a point on the line, and we need, we need a direction vector, V. Right? That's what we need. And the way we're going to get this is by realizing that these two planes, well, there's going to be sort of a normal vector here for the first plane. And there's going to be a normal vector, let's say, I don't know, here for the second. Right? And that line, because it's a line of the intersection of the two planes, it, that line is in both planes, it's parallel to both planes, and so the direction vector for the line, it has to be orthogonal to both of the normal vectors. Right? Well, that tells us that the direction vector we want has to be, oops, sorry, the cross product of the two normal vectors. And how do we get those normal vectors? Well, remember that the, for each plane, the normal vector is given by the coefficients of our variables. So if I look at what is n1, the coefficient of x is 1 in front of a y minus 1 in front of z, 1, right? There's like a 1 here, 1, 1. We just don't usually bother to write the 1s. Okay. n2. We have a minus 2 in front of the x, and then a 1, and then a 1. Okay, so we can proceed to compute the cross product. So we have i, j, k, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 2, 1, 1. Okay. And again, I'm just going to sort of and once you get a bit of practice with these cross products, you can start doing them pretty fast. Uh, minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2. For j, I have 1 plus 2 is 3, but j comes with that minus sign, so it's minus 3. For k, 1 minus 2, minus 1. All right, and then because we were never 100% confident that we did these right, there's always the room for sign errors. We quickly check our dot products to make sure things have worked out. Um, so minus 2 plus 3 minus 1. That adds up to 0. Uh, 4 minus 3 minus 1 adds up to 0. So this is indeed orthogonal to both normal vectors. So we have the direction vector for our line. Um, and by the way, um, if you want to, I'll, I'll leave it as is. If you don't like all those minus signs, you could just as well have done n2 cross with n1, and then you would get plus 2, plus 3, plus 1 at the end, right? Um, you can always change the sign on, you know, if you're just looking for a direction, like a normal vector or direction vector, you can always change the sign. It's still going to be a valid solution. So if you don't like the minus signs, just flip the sign. That's fine. Okay. Well, we still need...
a point of intersection. All right? Uh, we need a point which is on the line. That point has to be on both planes. And there are a number of ways to find one point. The, the issue here is that, you know, um, we have two equations with three variables. There are infinitely many solutions um, satisfying both of these equations, right? A whole line's worth of solutions. Um, so how do, you, how do you go about finding a single point that works for both, right? Well, if I, if I pick, you know, 200 people in my class that are all working on this problem, um, they might all come up with completely different points because they're all going to use different methods. Um, probably not 200 different points, but I bet I would get like a dozen different points. Um, so what the textbook does is the textbook um, solves both equations for z and then equates the resulting, you know, um, x and y terms to each other, which gives us an equation involving, you know, x and y. Um, it's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is just say set z equal to zero. Okay, we can do that. Um, so if we just put, you know, or, or x or y, but we're going to, I'll set z equal to zero, right? Um, so z equals zero in each equation uh, gives us Let's see, gives us in the first equation, um, x minus y. And I'm going to move the, uh, the constant terms over to the other side. Minus minus 2 plus 2 minus 1. There's a plus 1 on this side. I'm going to bring that over. Um, so with z equal to 0, I get a minus 1 there. Uh, in the next one, I have minus 2x um, plus y equals, so let's see, I have 4, plus 1 is 5, minus 3 is 2, bring that to the other side and I get minus 2, okay? So now I have two equations with two unknowns, right? I've just said that all I've done is put z equal to 0, uh, and now I can try to solve. So if I, if I add the two equations, minus y plus y, the y's cancel out which is why I'm doing this. Uh, x minus 2x, I get minus x equals minus 3. So x equals 3. And then I can plug that back into either of the equations to get, uh, to get the value for y. So if I put x into here, right, so 3 minus y equals minus 1 uh, tells me that y is equal to 4, okay? All right, so that gives me a point 3, 4, and I set z equal to 0. That gives me a point on the line, right? And you could have chosen other values for z, or you could have set one of the other variables equal to 0, or you could solve each equation for z like the textbook does. So, you know, there are many ways to get a point, right? Um, there's no unique answer here. We just need to find one, okay? And so now that we have a point and a direction, we can write down the equation of the line as our final answer. Right? So our line is L of t equals um, 3, 4, 0 plus minus 2, minus 3, minus 1. Oh, what am I missing? T. Okay, that gives me the equation of the line. Um, by the way, those of you who are also in linear algebra, if you've already taken it, or if you did a little bit of solving equations in high school, um, you might know another way to tackle this problem. We'll talk about that in another video. We'll look at another method for solving this problem in the next video.